Truckers XTV on air. We are now live in three, two, one. March 23rd, 11.54 a.m. This record, Defender Lobby number three. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Phoenix Right Ace Attorney Just for All. In the previous episode, we began the tri- the second day trial of my farewell turnabout. Today's episode, we we're gonna go talk about we're gonna be on trial with Adrian Andrews again. If you have this episode, make sure to hit that like button. Sports great, appreciate you to the channel. <laughs> Oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought in your desperation you'd try to bend the guilt onto Adrian. Ah, I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick! Pearls, where's Mia? I don't know. A really strong power suddenly called her away. A really strong power? Mr. Nick, your phone is... It's from Gumshoe. How's it going? I've been been hanging in there, pal. Yeah, sort of. We just barely found something to latch onto. Phew, that's good, pal. And what about you? Anything yet? Have you figured figured out where the killer and Maya are? Uh, we still don't have any leads, but... What? We don't have any more time. If we just had one, even a single clue would be really helpful. I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself, I gotta keep the trial going until Maya's been rescued. But I, I have, but have I just run out of luck this time? It's all our hope or not? A tent? Huh? A tent? I could see a circus tent. Mia! It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now, and I could see a circus tent outside the window about 300 feet away. Gumshoe! Is there a circus in town right now? There's only one, pal! A very big circus! Maya's somewhere within 300 feet radius of the main tent! What? Okay, hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map, about 300 radius from the main tent! Hurry! And... And? A mailbox under the window. Gumshoe, there's also a mailbox. Hmm, okay, what else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was only a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. It felt like I was in an old office building, maybe the third floor or so. I heard her! An old office building! Good stuff, pal! Okay, just hang in there, just a little longer. Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Good luck. I'll call you later, so don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Mia, Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Gumshoe, please hurry! Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya's rescue. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. It could be a little bit short episode because there's only like one thing we have to do. So, but oh well, I'll prolong it. I will now reconvene a killer, a man who murdered the recta, victim, and enlisted his client. From this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real criminal. Now then, the prosecutor calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. Currently, the witness is accused of tampering obstruction of justice. However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. You have seen it before? That's right. It's only natural the witness has. Miss Andrews, could you please enlighten the court to this bear's secrets? Alright. Why? Why does she know about the bear? The bear figurine. Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. 
Ow! I had sighted... I had said there's a small cavity with just enough room to store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell that's, that it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. So this figurine is a cochino of sorts, is it? Yes, looks can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is superb craftsmanship. Oh yes, I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. It looks like there really was something to bear, after all. Bear figurine. A puzzle? That's right. Uh, but it looks like an ordinary figurine. True enough. The people who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess that this was a pi this was a puzzle. So what kind of puzzle is this exactly? So you can't take it apart. And how would one go about doing that? Well, you first turn its tail to the right, and then push it in. Oh, yes, I see. After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Oh, this is most interesting. A boy and his new toy. It's like he's five all over again. Oh, don't mind me. Go ahead and carry on. I think he lost it. Well, what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? And how do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from a friend and I. When a friend and I went to Switzerland. And this, this was a present from you? That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it would be perfect for one. So it was a present from Miss Andrews. Right now, so let's continue with your testimony. So who exactly knew how to solve the puzzle? Only the two of us, one and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland, so I doubt there are that many people with this same bear in this country. And this looks like it could be easily broken, especially if someone wanted to get what was inside. Well, it's a toy, but it can never be the same again once it's been broken. Why? Who else knows this bear is actually a small container or a jewelry box? I never told anyone. And as long as one never told anyone either, then only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? And of course that means Mr. Ongar didn't know, right? I think this is about all I'm going to get for now. Well, Mr. Wright. I think even you have come to realize that there is one very important fact we have uncovered, and that is this. The bear is actually a jewelry box. <sighs> now that we have agreed to this point, there is only one logical question that can come next, and that is this. What is inside the box? What's inside? That's right, that's what we are going to find out next, Witness. Yes? You're all the only one who can open this. Please. There's a painful silence hanging over the courtroom. <clears throat> all eyes are on Miss Andrews now as she solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? What is this? It looks like a note. I don't think we need to guess at what that is, do we, Mr. Wright? It's a suicide note. 
A suicide note. A suicide note left by one Corridor's former manager. So last impacts. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts, but just as we suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, one Corridor himself. It shaped Celeste's impacts had very beautiful handwriting. And she just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. This is most definitely the note she left right before she committed suicide. Order! Witness! Did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from one. When I discovered his body, it looked... It looked for the bear. I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public. But... I couldn't find it anywhere. Because it had already been taken by Nick Heller. Everything is going up at Mr. Edward's pace. So now that the suicide note has been found, what's the next logical question? What is written on the note? That's right. At least, that's what I would think. Now then, I believe it is only appropriate the contents of the note may be known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it. And I was going to burn it for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I cannot allow it to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, if you could please read the contents of this note aloud. Very well. The judge's voice rang loud and clear through the dead, silent courtroom. In her note, Celeste Impacts left to us a record of all that had happened to her. About being used and then throw away by Ungard. About being engaged to Corda, Ungard's role in destroying that. And about how she decided in her despair to end it all. And that's all Miss Impact had to say. There is one thing I would like to say here. The prosecutor has no interest in slaughtering Mr. Ungard. Then what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Is that not correct, witness? Yes. And then I had the murder. I was going to make the contents of the note public. After the post-ceremony show, he was going to hold a press conference. Why, right. Mark Ungard values above all else. It was refreshing like a spring breeze image. Which is why he had to stop himself from being made public. At any cost. Tongard's fault the woman killed herself. And this time, you even went so far to kill someone to stop him from revealing that. How terrible, what a selfish person. I guess there are slimeball lawyers out there who will defend these peeps too. There is no margin for doubt here. Mr. DeKiller's client goal was to obtain this suicide note. And the only person who needed this note that badly is the defendant. Let's not forget that the bear with the note inside was found at the defendant's house. It seems that we have some we have come to the truth at last. The defendant's models were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. Uh, how am I supposed to escape from this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Gabshi hasn't caught yet, so you know what you must do. I know. I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay. There are two deadly pieces of evidence. The figurine and the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can't find a way out of this situation through one of those. The gavel is already in the judge's hand. Phoenix, hurry! The suicide note or the figurine? Which one of these should I pursue? I mean, we're gonna get penalized for one of those things, and... I mean, I want to look back on what we had to con conversate. I would say... The figurine? You now do what daily web precision would ask which one to pursue, select either the figurine or Celeste note. There, there is only there is one thing, anything that countries claim, did Anga really know about the note or the bear? Alright then. Please wait, your honor. 
Oh man, look at that lawyer. He's still going at it. It's like he doesn't care that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. The assassin took this t took this with him from the crime scene after murdering Mr. Corridor. After the request of his client, of course. So what's your report, Mr. Wright? I don't think it's possible that Mr. the Killer's client was Matt Ungard. In fact, I think there's a contradiction here. You can't tell by just looking at it that this bear is really a jewelry box. The chances that Matt Ungar thought this note was inside this bear uh, are zero to none. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Exactly. I did think of it that way, and I thought it was rather strange. After all, there's no reason why Mr. Ungar would ever want a jewelry box like this. Order! You make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on this one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. I believe a show of appreciation is an order. And I thought it's gonna be a short episode. The French seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. I would like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It is a very small video camera, Your Honor. This type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. Spying? What the? I thought that spy camera was in my possession. What Ungar and the victim both thought of that of the other as their biggest rival. I even went so far as to use this type of item to fight each other's weaknesses. And... The victim, one corner, was being spied on. His special life was being watched by none other than Matt Ungard. Order! Mr. Wright! Yes, Your Honor? You... You don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities. Well... Sort of. Sort of, it's not an acceptable answer, Mr. Wright. I say you are confused, Mr. Wright. You're probably thinking, but I have the camera that was in the stuff bear's eye. But this camera that I have is not the same one. Last night, I searched the victim's house on a hunch. Using this... I have shoes, Bug Sweeper. By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found on this camera. Aren't right, Ungar's fingerprints were on there? Well, Phoenix, looks like those cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? What am I supposed to say to that evidence? I, f I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. Ungar learned of the suicide note through this. He was watching the victim all along. He got me good this time. I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, hey, now what's that lawyer thinking? Mommy, is that man bad killer guy? Shush, stop, don't look at him. The way he's sweating, he's just so, ew, nasty. Phoenix? Yes, Chief? Have you figured out what you're going to do next yet? What I'm going to do next? Does running away like a frightened child of work? I know it seems like Mr. Edward is very close to putting the lid on this case, but in his eagerness to prove his point, he forgot one very important thing. Well, what is it, Mia? There's a piece of evidence that he really should investigate. Something he should investigate? I would really hate to see the good prosecutor get scolded. Or not remembering to look into, what, into the eye when, when he had a chance. Why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? I do not remember this. I think it's time to finally understand everything. Well, Mr. Ryan, you don't have any further objections, do you? What is the piece of evidence he is talking about? Can I figure it out? What is that deal needs to be looked at? Who's that evidence? I have an objection, Your Honor. Huh. That was about the weakness objection I've ever heard, Mr. Knight. Objection! Your Honor, the fence has no intentions of letting this go so easily. You're being too, to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth, 
This is not like you at all. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. Hey, isn't that what I just said? Well, you're telling me that I forgot something. You're so close, Mr. Edgeworth. But there is something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. What do we have? Found at Unger's Mansion with love, Celeste, yeah, yeah, yada. Credit card expense. The credit card? No. Set to record the victim's room from 8 p.m. for one hour. Was running at the time of the murder. Spy camera. The transmitter? We used the footage taken by the spy camera. Yeah, it's been a while since I've, I've had a look at this. It's either one of these two things. Let me double check. Uh, let's see. Present evidence and present suicide note. Did we get the suicide note as evidence? Oh, we did. It tells Ungar's horrible misdeeds. That is... Impact's a suicide note, right? Hmm. Who knows? I mean, sure this suicide note was found inside this bear. But this bear was in my position until a few moments ago. Which means... The handwriting on this suicide note has yet to be analyzed! Ugh. So, as to whether the pivotal piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impact's or not, has yet to be even remotely confirmed. Mr. Wright, you can't seriously be suggesting. Mr. Wright, you, are you saying the suicide note is fake? Miss Andrews, you're the one who tried to pin the murder on Mr. Ongar. Who's to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into the bear? How dare you! Your Honor, the fence is in is, is, uh, fence is indiscrimin uh, indiscriminating accusing the witness again. There is no evidence linking the witness to the suicide now whatsoever. But if this is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it. What? Recall the witness testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who could solve the puzzle is the witness herself. As Andrews, you wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Matt Ungar. I... I did no such thing. Right, if you're going to pronounce this suicide note a fake, then show to the court some evidence to support your theory. Mr. Edgeworth, you were the one who presented this scra scrap of paper as evidence. That means that burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution! Ugh. That's enough! Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on the suicide note? As, as the fans has stated, their handwriting has yet to be analyzed. And that's the case, it seems that yet again we have reached a point where our verdict is impossible. Imposs- that's impossible! This isn't good, Phoenix. The judge is going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Maya will physically be able to make it another day. I didn't want to have to do this, but I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecutor and the feds further investigate. Hand running an ass in my butt, that's just the lawyer trying to buy more time. I think we've reached the end of line. more of this is my question what is that sound it's gumshoe 
I don't Hello? Gumshoe? Arr. What is with him? What's with that sign? Where's Maya? What happened to the killer? Uh, he got away. What? I'm sorry, bro. I really am. I don't know what to say besides I'm sorry. I wish there was some way to make it up to you. I really do. Anyway, what's going on? We found his hideout, pal. But the two of them were already gone. This is terrible. I'm going to keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry. There's need a little more time. But... Don't tell me we don't. We don't have any more. You hear that? They're calling for his head. Mr. White, I can't. For us to come this far and... Oh! What is it? Let me talk to Mr. Edgeworth. I can't do that. Mr. Rod, would you please get a hold of yourself? Yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. You may check your phone calls after. Hold on, Your Honor. Edgeworth, catch! Mr. So Edgeworth! Please, you got to buy us some more time! Honor's in session. Come on! I'm sorry, Your Honor. We, you were saying? It's alright. This is a court of law. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... I'm reluctant to do this. However, it appears that I have no choice but to suspend proceedings until tomorrow. This time, I really can't do anything. Order is now in draw for today. Please write, Your Honor. Edgeworth? What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I only request another 30 minutes of Your Honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform the necessary tests on this piece of evidence in that time. Uh, well, can you really obtain your results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, Your Honor. But wouldn't it be better if you adjourn for today and reconvene tomorrow? Any match, please, Your Honor. That's all I am asking for. Please, Your Honor. Very well. At the prosecution request, the court, this court will now take a three-minute recess. I'll be advised that I will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. March 22nd, 204 p.m. This report. Right. Well, what's going on with my situation? The killer. Looks like he got away again. 30 minutes. I can't find her in that time. <sighs> Hello? Ah, oh, that's not Mr. Edgeworth. We don't have time. Just spit it out. Right. It looks like we just missed them, sir. But the killer left a few things behind by accident in his rush to get away. A pair of flames. Can't we use any of them as evidence? Oh, oh I thought you were asked, Carl. I've got the things they left with me right now, and I'm on my way over. Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. We don't have time to wait for those guys, sir. When those guys weren't looking, I swapped the stuff and ran. What? Well, I'm not a detective anymore, so I had to. I'm really sorry, sir, but I got to put the, the law on the hold for now. Sounds bad. Hope he doesn't get in too much trouble over this. My uncle drug the car? I said I'd be there in about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry, I'll be there. Wait for me. Alright, just get here in one piece. I'm on a mission. No one can stop me now, sir. No one. I'm pulling out all the stuff and running every red light. I don't sleep by the murderer, huh? Maybe there's something among them that will be decisive enough to end this. What was that? Hey, what's wrong? Detective Gumshoe, answer me! No, oh, I can stop. I'm... Beep. 
what happened? Sounded like he had an accident. I'm guessing his cell phone broke as well. Ooh, what was he thinking? We got to hurry and call for help. Well, we have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken and, we, and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so no radio either. Also, if we don't get those items before they do, the police will take possession of them. No, we can't let that happen. Well, if there's a way we can find out where he is, then stand a chance. Why the Cubs should have to get into an accident now? Is there any way to find out exactly where he is at this moment? There is a way. Okay. That's right, there is a way. What? How? I'm sure we could find out where to take the Cubs to is through this. Why are you bringing Francisca at a time like? Oh, I see. I'll try to get in contact with her. The chances are slim, but she's all we have. Francisca, will she even want to help us? Edgeworth. What is it? I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client is guilty, but what I'm doing now, I'm pinning the guilt onto someone totally innocent and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say, Defense Attorney Phoenix Wright chooses death. Right. It doesn't suit someone like you to cry unless there's tears. Useless tears. Whether you do your job well or not, that can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. The verdict? There's prosecution Archwood here. Yes, Bailiff. There's a full phone call for you, sir. They said it was extremely urgent. I'll probably finish with a handwriting analysis. I have to go take this call. In the meantime, think hard about what is you must do. And with that, we're at this episode right here, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to hit that like button, comments, points. If you're new, feel like a seat's coming. This is Rockers XTV, and I'm signing out.